Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, CNC Built by Me. Today I finally completed my new CNC machine. In this video, I will show you how easy it was to build this high-end DIY machine. The first thing I did was to make a jig for marking the locations of the tapped holes in the steel tubes. Although the four pieces could be cut by hand, I used my old CNC machine to cut out the parts. It's very important that the hole locations are accurate and that the holes are drilled perpendicular to the surface. I'm hoping this jig will help align all the holes in the eight steel tubes that make up the frame of this new CNC machine. The jig should hold the tube tight enough that it does not wiggle, but loose enough that it slides in and out with relative ease. One side of the jig is for the FK12 ball screw support unit, and the other side is for the FF12 floated support unit. Eight pieces of identical length were cut from the 2-inch steel tube. Once again I used my old CNC machine to cut out the parts for the tapping tool. These parts could be cut by hand if a CNC machine is not available. I use this tapping tool to mark the hole locations on the tube. The idea is to make a dent in the steel that can later be drilled out on the drill press. I also scored lines to indicate the recess into the base, as well as where to cut the top of the tube. Although all the holes could be marked with just one jig, I ended up using three different jigs to avoid making mistakes on the different hole patterns needed. Once the holes have been marked, the top of each tube can be cut to its exact height. The other scored line on the opposite end of the tube does not get cut but rather indicates how deep the tube will sit inside the 8mm thick base. A drill press is recommended for pre-drilling the holes in the tubes. This will make it easier to tap the holes with an M5 bit. A hole is needed on the opposite side of the FF12 support unit in order to clamp the internal retaining ring at the end of the ball screw. Each of the eight tubes will get tack welded to an 8mm base. Clamping precision steel blocks on all four sides will help keep the tube perpendicular to the base while welding. Here I'm making another template. This template is slightly longer than the previous ones but the exact same procedure is followed. These two tubes will hold the Z-axis linear actuator.
it's very important that these two tubes are welded flush. Because the flange bushings sit proud of the steel tubes, they will need to be grinded down. I didn't tighten the screws of the rod supports all the way because there needs to be a little play in them. I will tighten them in a later step. I wasn't sure if two M6 screws would be enough to hold the motor plate to the tubes. So playing on the side of caution, I ended up tack welding it in place. If all three tubes were constructed properly, the 20mm rods and ball screw should slide in and fit with relative ease.
Here I'm moving the linear actuator close to the end of the x-axis. With the ball screw support screw still tightened, I started tightening the rod support screws. Then I loosened the screws of the ball screw support and retightened them. This will help shift the rod and ball screw supports to the correct position. I do this a couple times alternating with the other side of the x-axis. This process helps align the ball screw and rods on both sides for smoother travel. Each of the four bases will sit on an MDF plate. This will raise the entire machine 15 millimeters. It can't be stressed how important it is that the machine is square. The Y-axis rails need to be perfectly parallel. It's also very important that the diagonal measurements between the corners be the same length. Adding the motors were pretty straightforward. Initially I thought I was going to mount the motors directly to the welded plate, but because of the size of the coupler, I had to add spacers. This 3D printed part will hold the Y-axis homing sensor. Now that the CNC is set up, I needed to find out if it was level on all four corners of the cutting area. In my setup, I set the front right corner as the reference point, as it was the closest to Z0. The remaining three corners were a bit higher than this reference point. I then measured each of the other corners with playing cards to get the discrepancy between that corner and the reference corner. Ideally they should all be very close to Z0, the less the disparity the better. I couldn't figure out why one side was 3 mm higher than the other. I still haven't figured it out, but did resolve the issue in the next step. It turns out that between all four corners there was a 3 mm difference. Using 1.5 and 1 mm shims, I placed the appropriate number of shims under the bases. The readings from the left corners are how much the opposite bases must be raised to make the left and right sides level. After adding the shims, this procedure is done again to measure any discrepancies between the front and rear bases. Although the CNC machine is not fully set up, I'm using it here to drill the holes for the tapped inserts. These inserts will give me the option to tighten down a workpiece if a flat surface is critical for a job. An example is shown towards the end of this video.
I took the time to paint this wall while I was waiting for my MDF sheets to be delivered. These holes are cut slightly smaller but at the same locations of the inserts underneath. I added these shims to square up my previous CNC build, but they are no longer needed. After surfacing the spoil board, I attached a dial indicator to the Z-axis and took measurements across the working area. Again with the front right corner set as the reference point, I measured the eight other locations around the spoil board. Now there was a disparity of 0.5 millimeters. I'm not sure at this point if I should chase that 0.5 difference. There's some genius out there that came up with this clamping system. I just can't remember who. I wanted to see how much this new machine vibrates while cutting, so I tried the good old washer test. If you like this video, please subscribe, share the link, leave a comment, or hit that like button.